Okay, here we are. It's six o'clock, and it is time for the live stream. So tonight, I want to do something a little bit special. Uh, I'm <laughs> celebrating a small achievement of 100 subscribers on YouTube, uh, and uh, you know that's it's not a, a huge number, but uh, you know it's just been over the past uh, month or so since I've started doing these live streams. I've gotten some great uh, feedback, great interest in this kind of stuff. So I appreciate all of you uh, who have been joining me in the past streams. I've, I've had uh, some great uh, regulars here, uh, both on YouTube and on Facebook here. So, uh, you know, I, I want to thank you guys for, for checking out the, the art and for having lots of uh, great questions. And uh, speaking of which, uh, what I aim to do with tonight's stream is to uh, help to uh, answer some more of the questions that you have uh, either about me and uh, my backstory or about my process uh, or specific uh, specific details about um, you know different strategies I use to to make the work that I do and uh, so feel free to post your question on the comment stream here and uh, I will do my very best to answer it in a thorough and uh, timely fashion here. So uh, I'm also going to be, while, while I do that, I'm going to be walking you through a little bit of the process of creating or using a photo study. So here's an example here. Uh, this is a recent work that I did. And uh, before I dive into that, I, I want to point out something quickly about this that... Um, uh, I love pointing out my own mistakes here, and uh, I definitely made I definitely made one here, in terms of the uh, the concept and the um, the uh, conveying of the idea here. I think I I made some good progress with the uh, the details and the lighting, and uh, I was I was really pleased with how a lot of the anatomical features came out. Uh, but uh, of course, you know I I kind of I made this work over. A period of a couple of days, I was just working on it, you know, by myself, uh, and I didn't, I didn't really run it by anybody before. I was like, okay, this is finished, and uh, you know, it's, uh, I guess, basically, uh, my intent was to convey like a uh, dragon and its rider uh, having just, you know, returned from a battle and are very weary and uh, kind of settling down in the forest here together, <laughs> and then I didn't realize until the uh, the comments started coming in you know people people thought uh, she had just killed this dragon they were like <laughs> why is she smiling it looks like she's smiling at a friend but uh, she's clearly just murdered this dragon so I thought that was pretty funny and I thought it was a great example of uh, a couple things a uh, lack of clarity in uh, story or concept that I'm putting forth you know you want whatever you Whatever your intentions are with the piece, you want them to be immediately readable, and you don't want there to be any ambiguity about it. And two, that it's uh, definitely useful to uh, to run uh, to run your progress by somebody else, anybody. You know, it doesn't have to be another artist; it just can be a uh, a family member or a friend. Show them your work and say, "Hey, like, what do you think is going on here? What's your first impression?" Uh, you know, I uh, I showed this to a f friend, and they didn't they didn't uh, assume that she had killed it, but they, <laughs> they did point out some some thing. I they they said something like, "Oh, why are her boobs so wide apart?" And I was like, "I don't know. It's it didn't seem like it was the case to me, but uh, you know, to the the uh, random observer, maybe it did. Uh, I guess I wasn't like particularly focused on that detail, but um, anyway, uh, it's a really good habit to to get into. So. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, a strategy I used for this piece, uh, and I think what made it really successful in a lot of ways, is using a photo reference while while I worked. So I'm going to bring this up here. This is uh, the photo reference I used, and uh, obviously I didn't copy it exactly, um, but you can hopefully see the resemblance here and see how... Uh, Finding a good reference like this and using it while you work can be 
uh, really useful in creating a convincing face or material or landscape, whatever it is. It's really good to have these things around. Uh, in this case, I was I was trying to I was working pretty directly from it in terms of you know the lighting was right, so I could use a lot of those details. And uh, you know, looking at them next to each other like this, it really you know you can see the uh, the discrepancies between you know how the faces came out, but uh, ultimately, I mean, it, yeah, this is way better than it would have been if I hadn't used this reference. So, uh, I'm just going to get rid of that here. And today we're just going to, uh, in addition to uh, going over some of your questions here, I'm going to I'm going to take this picture. This is just a stock photo I found uh, on uh, online, and I'm you know I'm not like a huge uh, fan of this photo in particular, but uh, I looked at it and I think the, there's some good. Um, Good opportunities for jumping off with the lighting and the anatomy and uh, maybe some possible uh, uh, opportunity for creating some fantasy characteristics from this piece um, so uh, and uh, yeah so I'm just gonna kind of start doing that I'm probably gonna just crop this because I don't need any of the uh oh, I gotta clear this ratio here I don't need any of the uh, th these other details here. I'm really just concerned with with what's going on with this uh, with this face. And this is also I'm just realizing now this is like a straight on angle, which is not something I would typically do or choose for a photo study, but it will be useful uh, just as an anatomy reference, and um, you know it conveys things pretty clearly. And uh, you know photos like this with the you know there's it's a pretty girl with. Uh, you know, pretty, like, flawless skin and all this. I mean, you know, there's probably a bunch of makeup on here and everything, but that's not important, really. Like, this can actually be very challenging, uh, and I don't recommend starting with something like this. I would recommend starting with, like, uh, somebody who's very old or, like, a grizzled man or something, you know, something with a lot of uh, lines on it. And uh, if I finish this up early, maybe I'll jump into something like that. Um, but you also want to look something, look for something that has, like, clear lighting, uh, this lighting is sort of diffuse, so it's not, I don't know, it's not ideal, it's not what I would usually work with, but it is sort of clear, there's, uh, there's, let me grab my pen here, and I'll show you, there's, I mean, a pretty clear light source direction, uh, coming from over here, let's change the color there, light source direction, uh, coming from this area here, you can see the shadow sort of lightly outlined here. Um, you can see the, the line of the hair. And having that clarity of the light source is going to be super useful for us if, um, uh, you know, if, if you try to use a photo with, like, poor lighting as a reference, it's not going to help you too much. Maybe just for the, the mapping of the details, but, you know, uh, that's a whole other subject maybe for another video, but... Um, so, uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, Taha has a, has a question here. Um, I don't know how you can find the reference. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean exactly there. Uh, if you're looking for, um, oh yeah, yeah. So if, how to find a reference photo, yeah, I think is what you're, you're asking here. And, um, you know, uh, a great place to start is just, um, start with, uh, a stock photo website. There are plenty of those. There is uh, Pexels. Uh, it's this one here. Um, and uh, this just has a lot of... These are all um, royalty-free. They're free for the public to use. So it's a great place to start uh, if you want to avoid running into issues with, you know, copyright and that kind of thing, which I never have, but uh, it's it doesn't hurt to do so. Um, can also it's another one unsplash that's another great one uh you know if you just want to search like you know woman face like i did just a minute ago you'll find a lot of this stuff and a lot of these you know the lighting isn't that di that great because they're supposed to look very diffuse and uh you know nice but uh 
I mean, the lighting's good for the photo, but not necessarily good as a reference because it's there's no clear directionality or anything. Um, I kind of like the lighting in this one, personally. Uh, you know, it's a bit more naturalistic, um, but anyway, yeah, this is a. Uh, those are great. Um, you can go to Adobe Stock. Um, you can. Uh, you can sign up for a free trial and get 10 stock photos. Adobe stock has a lot of, um, I think their, their stock photos are generally higher quality and more specific to what you might be looking for. Um, but you know, they do charge for a monthly subscription. I figured out you can just, I mean, uh, you know, I don't tell anyone I told you this, but you can just keep signing up for a free trial with different emails and get <laughs> get 10 new stock photos a month. Depends upon how uh, committed you are to doing that, but uh, I don't use this that much, so it's, it's definitely useful for that. Anyway, um, and uh, yeah, so you just want to find um, photos that are, are going to be useful for you in that in that context and um, so I hope that, uh, answers your question a little bit and, uh, let me know if you have any other details you want to know about. Um, and there's also, uh, let's see, Alex posted a question here I want to get to, um, and I want to address that quickly here. Uh, Alex asks, uh, can you go over the process of creating the initial sketch? How do you go from an idea in your head to putting it down on paper? Uh, also, how do you go from your imagination to gathering reference, using the reference properly, sketching out the figure and creature in an environment, how to draw out the environment, things like that. So I've already covered using the references a little bit. Um, as far as, you know, creating a sketch, uh, you know, you'll see with the, uh, I can pull up the uh, time lapse for this, this particular piece. Um, and you'll see that I started out with um, just just some strokes on the canvas, just some general gestures. I like here. If we stop it right there, um, I'm just creating motion in the piece, and um, I'm not even sure I knew what I was going to create at this point. But like just at this point, this is probably when I discovered what it was I wanted to make. I just done these quick. Uh, I also you know I had a vague idea that I wanted to create some kind of uh, female figure and, you know, create something that tells a bit of a story. So, you know, just right off the bat, I have my concept based on those strokes. Uh, and a lot of other times it takes a lot longer to figure it out. And I've gone over in some of my other live streams, how you can go from just random textures and colors and shapes on a canvas to a fully fleshed, uh, fleshed out concept, idea, illustration. Um, and a lot of that has to do with getting in this mindset of not trying to come up with an idea, rather just trying to read it from your, uh, from your, um, from the strokes you've put down on the canvas, you know, um, if I create a, uh, a new thing here and I just want to get in and uh, just start creating some uh, some strokes in here you know even with let's say a little of this you know even something as simple as this you know it, it's it's a stretch to read anything out of it but you know if you start to add some some things in there you just keep looking for something that that uh, that might be recognizable and you just and you just sort of sort of play with it a little bit play with creating using different colors and creating different lighting situations and you know that's one way of developing a concept and uh, it's not the only way I mean you can you can really think this out and think about what you want to convey I kind of did that with this one a bit more I knew I'd been working on my my uh, facial anatomy and my figures recently so I wanted to sort of showcase that a little bit um, I knew I wanted to create something with a bit more of a compelling story so I wanted to create a relationship with with these two uh, characters here and as I found out later um, 
I need to improve that skill more. I, I haven't quite communicated what I wanted to with this piece. Uh, I think it looks nice, but it's just, uh, you know, it's not telling the story that I want it to tell. So, you know, if you think about uh, what kind of story you want to tell with your piece, um, and, uh, you know, just do some, some thumbnailing, some s quick sketches. If you have just one jumping off point, like I want to have a female character, I want them to be interacting with something else. Just do some quick little thumbnail sketches, really quick, 10 minute sketches, uh, fill a page with them and then come back and see if you have any good ideas from there. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as executing the, uh, I've asked, been asked questions about, um, the composition as well and setting up a scene, uh, to tell a story. So let's do something here. Let's, let's tone this down a bit and, uh, let's go over what I was doing here with this composition. Let's use a nice color that's not in here. How's that? Perfect. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay. So, I mean, right off the bat, I started with this kind of swishy gesture. I think it started off something like this, and then with a little this, and then just sort of some things like that. That was the foundation of this whole composition. And, uh, you know, it's also really all I needed to get that concept rolling. Um, you know, this line here, this is something I'm already familiar with from doing figure drawing uh, practice. This is this is the gesture line, and if you if you want to get into figure drawing, really, if you want to uh, depict anything organic like this, especially you know a human body or a creature or something, this is a really good habit to get into. See if you can define that creature with a single line before you even start. So on top of this, I've got the head here. I've got this general pose here. And this already is showing that she's leaning back. Um, her weight is off center. Here's her, you know, her weight center. Obviously, there's it's, it's unbalanced, so she's going to be leaning against something. And, uh, and then, you know, I can kind of counter that with various um, body shapes and that kind of thing. Just want to start out with these these big general gestures and uh, and from there you can start adding in your the building blocks of your anatomy. So as far as the whole composition goes, um, I have uh, two main focal points here. Uh, and it's, and uh, well, you know, I basically have this, which is the main focal point. And then I have this, which is sort of a sub focal point. And then there are other areas of interest around, um, you know, there's, uh, there's some, some lighting happening here and some detail that's, that's sort of interesting. Uh, there's this very sharp shape right here with some uh, high contrast lighting along it. There's some high contrast areas here and here. And uh, a little bit of detail along this region here. And, uh, and then there's this sort of curving shape with the horn. There's another curving shape with the hand. And then there's this big curve of the dragon that sort of comes around here. So if you look at this, you can see that like all of this is contained. There's nothing that's like leading really out of this, uh, or like the, everything here is communicating with one another. So there's some mirroring going on here. These shapes are almost they're you know they're like two uh, two things like almost reaching out to each other. You know, they're reflecting each other. They're they're creating communication between these two shapes. They're sharing shape language. And you have this big curve of the dragon here. This is helping to frame the whole piece. Uh, 
you know, even even these spines are sort of curved inwards, so it's it's not like they're not shooting you out this way. Uh, there's nothing interesting. Let's change the color here. There's nothing interesting going on here or here or here, kind of here, but not really, not really here. Uh, not even here or even here. Um, if you saw my uh, my post on Evident, this is uh, you know these are what I would call areas of non-focus. Um, there are, these are places I've deliberately um, deliberately blurred out so that uh, so that the eye isn't drawn to them and away from other important areas. Um, even even areas like this. If I turn this off for a minute. Um, you can see I've, you know, this, you would expect the legs to be shown here. And if this was a photograph, they definitely would, but that's why this is a painting. That's why, you know, we create art like this because we can make those choices and we can, uh, we can decide what elements we do or do not want to include. We can decide where we want our lighting to hit. You know, if you think about our lighting in this picture, um, it's it's hitting right here but it's not hitting here or here a little bit here and then a couple spots here you know these are just the i'm using the lighting as if it were a natural source to highlight key areas but you don't see any of that over here i mean in a little sort of a muted sense just to keep things consistent i've done it here but definitely not around here. I've created some uh, rim lighting on the other side that helps to create a nice contrast between these two light sources. And also, I mean, really the point of this is to have those two light sources meet right on our face. So we can have this really interesting high contrast dynamic between two light sources around the focal point and at other areas in the piece. Even a little bit here and here just helps to frame everything a bit better. So besides that, um, I mean, it's a pretty simple composition overall. You know, your, your eye can come in uh, you know, just about anywhere, it's probably going to immediately sort of maybe draw to this, um, from here, it'll, it can swing up this, this landscape. It's not going to be anything interesting here. So it'll probably move up the, the sword, or you might, uh, be drawn to the dragon here. These horns are going to bring you up back up here where the hand can carry you up to the face, or this gesture can bring you up to these focal areas. Um, this other horn is sort of taking you around this side. This whole thing is bringing you around directly to her face line and then sort of carrying off back here. If you do come in from this angle, you can use these lines to bring you back in. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, you want just the whole, everything to be sort of contained around this relationship. And, you know, sort of... Uh, Conceptually, her gaze is also directed down here. So once it comes back up to the face, returns down here to see what she's looking at, and then it all comes back around. So, yeah, I think the composition worked well. I think everything worked well here, except uh, perhaps how the story was conveyed and how I set that up at the beginning. Um, and there are some other things I could have done to maybe make that more apparent about what is going on, but... Um, you know, I, uh, I won't, um, you know, for example, uh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's a good exercise to think of how I could have conveyed that idea more. And I'll definitely be thinking about that, uh, as I move forward with my next piece. But in any case, let's get going on, uh, this, uh, study here. And let me just, um, check, see if there are any other questions here. Uh, which tablet did I work in? Um, for this piece, uh, I, um, 
I used Procreate on the iPad Pro, uh, and that was really, it's a really great option for creating that kind of, um, let me just bring the, this back up so it's not so, uh, uh, I, I reduced the levels too much. Um, yeah, I highly recommend that. Um, and uh, for, you know, for my Photoshop work here, I'm using a, uh, a Huon, uh, what's it called? Inspiron. Uh, I think it's like 100 to 120 bucks, maybe. I, I've, uh, you know, I'm working my way up to getting an Intuos in my bro in my budget, but this is pretty good. The Huon stuff is like a really great cheap alternative. Uh, it has its flaws for sure, but you know, it's definitely enough for for what I want to do. It has pen tilt, it has 8,000 plus levels of pressure. Um, you know, all that uh, fancy stuff. It's got a nice uh, dial on it, so I can you know, adjust my, my brush size. It's got some hotkeys, so, uh, it's working for me for now, and, um, yeah, for sure, if you can get your hands on an iPad Pro, uh, I bought the, like, the first generation, I think that was a 2016 model, I bought that, uh, one or two years ago for, like, I think it was 400 bucks or so, and then I bought a case, and, uh, and I think that was with the pencil, um, so it's not quite as, I mean, there are definitely some a few limitations with that model, you know, it's, uh, doesn't have quite as good a processor, it's a little dim, uh, and I think because it was used, the battery's a little bit worn out, but, um, you know, other than that, it's, it's a great investment, uh, I, I'm also working my way up to, uh, investing in the, the 2020 iPad Pro, just because, um, I want those extra lumens on the display for working outside, and, uh, that kind of thing, I want the battery life, and, uh, the pencil, I think is a, a huge upgrade. Uh, I also use a, a paper-like protector on that, which gives me a, a rougher surface to work with. All right, so let's get rid of these arrows I've I've marked up this poor woman's face with, and uh, let's let's create a new one. You can see a process like this um, with uh, I've done a I think I posted a uh, actually we can just use this. Um, well, let's just get rid of it. You can start from scratch. Uh, I posted a process like this with my uh, my uh, Ian Holm uh, as Bilbo time lapse video, which is on my YouTube channel as well. Let's put that back and bring this out. Uh, I have another monitor here, which I would usually use for uh, my references, but so you guys can can see what's going on here. Um, I'm actually gonna take these and I'm going to I'm going to go to uh, arrange two up vertical this is a great format to use for uh, for references if you don't have another monitor or anything like that even if you do sometimes the you know I have trouble with this other monitor it's it's sort of a cheap one it doesn't have the same uh, colors same tone uh, range and everything so it's uh, it's not ideal really but it's helpful Okay. Hey, Nick. Uh, nice to see you here. Um, yeah, the Wacom uh, is, is, you know, I guess it's kind of the industry standard. And uh, they're uh, they're quite expensive, though. Um, depending upon who you are and what your budget is, that, uh, that might work. Um, and I haven't actually tried one myself, so maybe it's worth it. Uh, but uh, I guess if you haven't tried one, you will never know. So <laughs> it's like... Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I've heard, uh, heard great things about them. I think for the large, like to get the same surface area that I'm working with for this Huon one, I mean, this was like 120 bucks. I think the large is like 600 for the Intuos. Um, so, you know, maybe you could get a medium at a competitive price, but I really like the, the large drawing space helps, helps to not have my hand cramp up all the time. I started with, with a drawing tablet that was about um, probably like three by five inches of drawing space. It was just this little little tiny thing uh, <laughs> that I plugged into my laptop. And I, when I first started uh, doing digital artwork, and uh, I realized it was it was fun. It was a great intro to the medium, but I realized pretty quick it was was not going to work. My hand was was cramping up all the time. It was really hard to do details. Uh, Anyway, let's uh, let's dive in with this. 
and as usual, uh, I think what I'm going to do here is, is just sort of create some... Um, I'm not going to color pick from this photo, by the way. Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but uh, if, you, if you're trying to build your skills uh, in color matching and, and seeing color and creating accurate color, uh, you know, I would recommend just eyeballing it. And I'm actually, let's, uh, let's start with a, let's start with a dark background. I think I'm kind of having an idea of how I want this piece to go. And I'm not going to do a direct photo study here. Uh, I'm going to use the face. Uh, I'm going to kind of ignore the context and sort of make my own uh, piece out of it. So I'm just going to start with this uh, for our background, and let's just let's just go in and start to create some. Uh, by the way, I'm using a a cool color for my background uh, because I I'm recognizing that this is a warm light source, and I think to create a nice compelling piece, I'm going to I'm going to want to play on that that dynamic between those two. Uh, those two uh, color ranges. Actually, I'm gonna just quickly. Um, actually, you know what I can do? I'm just gonna pull up the uh, the YouTube and the Facebook comments on some uh, different windows here so I can see everything that's going on perfect got all the comments on on one screen so cool all right let's keep this going and uh, yeah I'm switching up the hues as I go noticed I've, I pushed it a little bit towards the green um, and I'm gonna mess with my values a, lit, a little bit as well uh, I just want to create some some interest some texture And uh, this is, uh, I think, this is a pretty high res piece, so I'm, I'm actually going to bump that down during this phase at the very least. Drop it to 2500. Just so I don't get so much brush lag, which can be a pain. Maybe I'm going to get it anyway. Who knows? Oh yeah, There's some interesting, interesting color dynamics going on here. It's good background. Now let's uh, let's just leave that for a moment and uh, return to our, our face tones here. Just trying to be pretty rough with it right now. Uh, notice generally. Um, <laughs> no, the image on the right is not the painting. <laughs> this image on the left is our painting so far. Uh, I got a little caught up in talking about uh, photo references and, and whatnot, so we've, we've got a bit of a late start on the study, and uh, you know who knows if we'll actually get this to a finish date tonight, but uh, I mean, my main priority is to, uh, to be able to answer some questions for you guys, so uh, yeah, if you're just joining us, feel free to, to drop a question in the comments. Uh, otherwise, just enjoy my uh my ramblings and uh my uh my attempt at at uh converting this um this stock photo of a of a beautiful woman into something uh maybe a bit more interesting I'm not saying she's not interesting but you know it's just she's just i want to i want to take this in a bit of a, a fantasy direction you know Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm just getting some general, general form and texture around here. Uh, yeah, about the uh, 
sensitivity. I've never, I, I don't really notice a uh, difference between, um, I think on the last one, it was the last hue on I had, it was like 4,000 levels of, uh, pressure sensitivity. And with this one, it's 8,000 plus. I, I don't really feel that much of a difference, but I'm not like a, I'm not much of a tech guy. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little more focused on, on, uh, what I'm putting on the canvas rather than, um, maybe how it's, how it's happening from the, the tech standpoint. But I mean, I do, um, I think this is definitely an improvement from, from the last one I had. I'm actually going to use, uh, I've put this, this face on a separate layer, um, just so I can, um, might be a little easier to, uh, adjust and manipulate the background from there. So I've got like, I don't know, some basic colors on here. I actually want to, I want to push these colors even more. Notice uh, I'm putting in more um, more red around the cheek and the nose area, and the rest of it's going to be um, a bit a bit more orange. Let's really push that push that orange a bit. Oh, and by the way, if you uh, are attempting this or or are ever going to attempt this. Um, know that you're going to create a freaky, terrible monster for the first, uh, <laughs> the first, first, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes, whatever, how much time you, uh, you put into this, uh, it's going to look pretty terrible for a minute, especially like if you're, if you're choosing a beautiful woman to do a, uh, a study of good luck, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm just saying like, don't get to this point or where it's about to go, which you're going to see, it's going to get pretty weird. Um, and give up because it looks like the, the most terrifying person you've ever met. Um, that just happens sometimes while you're adjusting your proportions and all that. We are super, super sensitive to facial features and recognizing them. And that's like a big reason why a lot of people, struggle with this and get frustrated and like uh I mean I personally I personally have for a long time that's why I've been doing it more uh it's because I just like I don't even want to touch it it's like everything I create just looks so like just so monstrous <laughs> you know and I didn't give myself the chance to push past that and make the the tiny adjustments needed to uh to bring that face from like pretty bad to like somewhat accurate, you know? Um, no, yeah, we, we don't have to worry about the, the direction of the fantasy here. I'm going to keep this one PG. Um, <laughs> feel free to go in whatever direction you want with your own. Uh, I'm, uh, focused. I'm going to focus a bit more on the storytelling elements here and see if I can, I can just sort of, uh, create some some concept interest here something that uh, that you might not find from a stock photo per se so uh, in these shadows too just as in the background I'm pushing that blue notice I'm, I'm using a lot more blue than than I see in the photo that's just to create more contrast with this this light source and uh, I think the facial, I'm going to push this into the gray. Actually, there's a lot of gray up here, and that's going to be useful as an intermediary between these two, uh, between the light and the shadow. She kind of looks like Natalie Portman a little bit. Now that I'm looking, I don't know. I'm a big fan of her stuff. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to start, you know, just 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 start somewhere. Don't get too, you know, bogged down by exactly how you're gonna place these things. You can always adjust as you go. And like I said, it's probably gonna look terrible for a bit, but who knows? Maybe it won't. I don't know. You never know until you try. Get in there, make some adjustments. Uh, just trying to get the general uh, shape face down or <laughs> shape face. <laughs> Uh, face shape down first and then from there I can use that to focus on 
the shapes within that uh, that I can use to define the facial features. But I'm also just, as I see them, I'm just going to create little marks where I think these features are going to lie. Got these very pretty thick eyebrows. Uh, and that's going to be super helpful for us as we plot out this, this composition. Um, can use the, uh, the shape between um, the shape between the hairline and the uh, the the forehead to uh, figure out where these eyebrows are going to go. So, oops, I don't want to mark her up. I'll show you. Let's think about for a second. Let's pause and think about the uh, the negative shapes we're going to want to focus on here. Don't don't worry about where the eyes are, or the nose is, or the mouth. Forget what all those things are. Let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, that's that's a little thick. Let me try that again. Let's look at this shape. That's easy. This shape. Uh, let's see, probably want to use this shape. Um, this one is a little harder to define, but I can, it stops at the nose there. Um, kind of follows a bit of a color pattern here and stops there. Uh, well, we can do the same thing on this side, sort of follow the cheek line. It's, it's just vague because, you know, again, she's young and beautiful and she doesn't have much definition there. Um, and then, you know, here it will focus on these shapes around the eyelid, this kind of stuff. Um, and then the shape between the top of the mouth and the nose. And the shape between the chin and the bottom of the jaw, these shapes here. And then from there, and we'll want to get that lip line in too. That'll be helpful. The distance between that lip line and the, the nose. We'll want to make sure that's right. Distance between the, the bottom of the chin and the lip line. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Once we have all that information, uh, we, uh, I mean, she looks terrible like this, but <laughs> that's just so you know, that's what I'm focusing on while I'm moving forward here. I'm not focusing on, on exact placement, but I'm just trying to get those negative shapes right. Uh, all right, yeah, nice to see you, uh, Samuel, and uh, I hope you, uh, hope you sleep well and uh, check out the, the stream uh, whenever you can. It'll be here whenever you want. Uh, seeing a bit of orange reflected light over here. And then all this is sort of, um, it's a bit more red than I've painted it here. All right, let's, um, let's actually, let's just go in with a, uh, more of a pencil here and start to map out those proportions. It'll be really important to get those, uh, sort of in here as soon as possible. So we don't waste too much time making adjustments later. In this, focusing on that negative shape again. Moving down here. This is coming across a little closer. That eyebrow there. This eyebrow is actually a little lower. So let's move that down. This is a little shaded in, but we won't worry about that too much right now. Um, okay, that goes back here. The hair continues down here I think somehow this turned out a bit this eye if you like the eyebrow length it's a little longer than perhaps I, I want it to be and I think that's because this side of the face is out a little too much so we'll just pull that in 
and I just want to make these shapes as clear as possible and compare them. Um, straight lines, you know, not too much sketchiness, like I've already done a little bit. And then we'll move on to this shape. By the way, this strategy that I'm using here is totally applicable uh, to anything. You don't—it doesn't have to be a face. Um, you just want to—you want to focus on the shapes, especially the negative shapes, because uh, in in a sense, your eye can see those more accurately than uh, the positive ones, because we have all these associations in our brains uh, about uh, shape language and what what it means you know when we see this immediately it's a face or it's an eye or whatever uh, and that that can be that can get in the way when you're trying to accurately assess uh, something's shape so I'm looking back and forth here I think this is okay uh, for now we can always adjust as we go and uh, let's think about the distance between these these two eyes. That looks pretty good. Kind of seeing if I can define these these eyes with with straight lines here, to avoid to avoid any ambiguity. I'm actually going to take a moment to um, adjust the uh, shading in here a little bit. I think it's a little darker than I've I've put down. I'll help reinforce our light source. And uh, I would say... Hmm, I think both these eyes are maybe just the right one. Need to shift to the right. I think both of them, so let's give that a try. Hold down shift. Select these. Copy paste. And let's just sort of shift these until they look a bit closer. I think that's good. And I think also, again, I need to pull in the, the distance around here. Need to pull that in. It's all about these just fine adjustments and then noticing patterns as you work too. You know, so you can use them when you're trying to create this on your own. You know, noticing things about the relationship between uh, between different shapes and uh, how they're interacting with one another. I know that red's a bit intense, but I can always dial it back later. Maybe I'll just fade it out a bit like that. Sort of switching between this dry brush and the pencil. Let's see if we can clarify this, uh, this cheek a bit. Add in some more of that red. If you've seen some of my other stuff, you know I like to push the colors at the beginning, wherever I see them. Keep pushing them as I work. Uh, so she's going to look like a clown for a little bit, but once you sort of balance them out, uh, you you know you want to think long term. What's your long term plan? Uh, how's this all going to come together? Silent Hill. Oh yeah, it's pretty. See, I I told you this is it's gonna get creepy and weird for a while, uh, for sure, especially without any uh, irises. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah. So merge that down. I think those eyes are a bit accurate, but you know we'll see. Uh, we can always. I'll show you in a bit. We can always flip it too, um, as we work. Just and that'll really help us see where we're going wrong here. Just gonna shape this jawline a bit, and um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm noticing this little. It's got the little uh, shadows under the eyes. Nothing too crazy. We don't want to push that too far and make her look like she's uh, sleep deprived. But they are there, and it's actually sort of this almost a, an orange color. Or they are. It's even brighter than that. It's something like here, and it's actually it's a thin line. So let's go back to the pencil. Just keep 
cue that in like that. And we'll, we'll come back to that later. We can blend it out, do whatever. And, uh, you know, while we're here, just so we can can avoid the, uh, the horror uh, vibes, f you know, maybe a little bit for now. Let's just, let's, let's paint these irises in. And again, not just, just paying very close attention to where that negative white space is. Um, in fact, it might even be better to, to paint that in than actually, uh, try to paint out these irises, but let's give that a try. And not, not because it's necessarily, necessarily going to be more accurate. I mean, you're going to want to paint out all these shapes anyway, but, um, it'll help you get in that mindset of like, I'm not painting an eye, I'm just painting a triangle. You know, these are, these are just two curvy triangles inside a larger thing. Make sure I get in that, that top eyelid. It's going to help define things for us. Uh, I think this comes down a bit more. And then there's there's a bit of a a warm highlight here. Notice these aren't white. Uh, the the sides are sort of gray, gray blue. <coughs> excuse me. Um, and uh, the highlight areas are are warm yellows. Just painting shapes here. And there's that little black outline around uh, the edge of her eyes here. It's, uh, I think most people have that. Uh, some people it's more pronounced than others. But I'm going to draw that in just because of how it is in this uh, picture. So yeah, still pretty creepy, but uh, I think the shapes are mostly accurate for now, and um, you know we can can cue in those highlights just to help us read things a bit better. Uh, that really makes it look a bit more three D, and maybe a little bit around uh, the edge here. Some of that catching the edge of the eyelid. All right. So we've uh, we've established our focal points, or you know, whatever you can call that for a, a face. I guess the whole thing's. I mean, well, that's we're gonna get to that later. Uh, how we're gonna how we're gonna design this to make it read a bit better as a painting, you know, not just a photo study. Um, but yeah, for now, let's just uh, let's go in and start to map in the the highlight along this nose. And uh, let's let's quickly with our pencil. Oh, that is the pencil. Um, let's take this shape. Kind of comes around here like that. That's the nose shadow, and then kind of comes out a little bit. And this comes around here. This goes around like that. Bottom of the nose. Uh, and then remember that shape we were doing earlier with the the cheek shape. I'm just going to sort of lightly map that out here. Got our nostril comes around this way. And uh Well, I'm, yeah, I'm glad they're starting to look uh, similar here. That's that's my that's my goal. That's your goal with any study. You want to be able to like you can start by rep that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm starting by replicating them 
or replicating it as close as I can while also making active design choices. Um, because you do, I mean, it's a good skill to have to be able to like capture an image accurately. It's not necessarily going to make a better painting, but it will help you in the long run. Uh, one thing I've noticed with, with faces recently is um, the deepest shadows tend to be like around the corners. These little, little uh, these corners of the, the lips, a great place, and uh, these little parts in the middle. Sometimes that's all you have to define. You don't have to just do a straight line across. You can just create those. And then let's follow the shape of the lip. Uh, and while I'm doing this, I'm not paying attention to the shape of the lip as much as I am paying attention to this uh, space between the lip and the nose. And likewise on the other side. And then same thing between the, the bottom lip and the chin. The bottom lip is a bit uh, larger, as it usually is. Uh, and yet, like right away, as soon as I've added, added that in, I'm looking, I think her, her whole face is uh, it's a bit too wide. So let's just, um, actually I'm not going to squish her, because that's going to mess up some other stuff we've done. But let's pull these cheeks in, just a little bit. I think this, this eye needs to be defined a bit more like that. I think everything needs to, uh, let's see, I'm just like looking back and forth really quickly. That's a good way to, to compare things. I think this whole area just needs to, oops, I'm gonna copy and paste that and then warp it. It's a great tool for minute adjustments like this. Just need to pull it over to the left a little bit. And uh, yeah, I still I'm feeling like this face is a bit too wide, so I'm just gonna keep pulling it in, pulling that chin up, pulling in, I think that angle, the chin angle is a bit uh, steeper. And that's, um, You know that's a that's a pretty typically uh, feminine characteristic. You know that kind of uh, steep chin angle, and then I think everything the the eyes are um, wider in comparison with the other features uh, than I've created here. So I'm just gonna do the same thing that I just did, but I'm just gonna shrink this whole unit down. I think that's going to work a lot better for us. And merge it down. And keep keep chipping away at that uh, that jawline. Just try to make it uh, more symmetrical than it is now. Oh yeah, and that distance between the the bottom lip and the in the jaw, that's just it's going to be a lot less. There it is. We're getting closer. It's all just it's all just a process of trying to get a bit closer with every stroke. Okay, let's return to this mouth. And uh I'm just seeing we need a bit more shading over here. Don't want to go too overboard with it, but there's that nose shadow. And uh, just use a bit more all around down here. It's just reinforcing that, uh, that light source even more. <laughs> Yeah, she's still pretty creepy, but um, closer to a face, a human face. And I think I just still need to keep pulling. I, <laughs> I just can't believe how how much I've had to to pull in these uh, these jaws. I really started out pretty wide, but still. 
still want to maintain this general contour that I had before, but I just want it to be a little bit closer to uh, a little bit closer to to the rest of her facial features. Need this orange, some of that reflected light. I'm going to push this shadow more towards the blue just because I can. And, uh, you know, since we have things mostly mapped out here let's flip it get ready <laughs> this always a terrible moment uh flip it all right so you can i hope you can see how flawed this is right now uh the whole thing's kind of just like leaning over to the right not even sure what's going on so let's just let's get to work here let's fix these major issues we have here no this this is not something I uh, I do too often especially not this this straight on angle uh, so if you want you know more uh, tutorials on um, you know painting like a, a female face like this uh, there's I'm sure there are plenty of plenty of other people on uh, on YouTube and and whatnot that can that can show you better than I <clears throat> but uh, my goal for today is to kind of show how you can take something like this a photo study and uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of use it as a as a bouncing off point for for um, What am I trying to say here? For for uh, developing a concept, you know, something new, something a little more original. Just making these tweaks. Gonna have to. It's probably good for the whole face. And then merge these down. Take down the tone a bit here. And she's looking a bit like a an aged country singer or something right now. Um, that's just, be just because there's still a lot of, you know, facial uh, uh, anatomy plotting lines around here. A lot of that's going to clear up once we start smoothing things out a bit. Even even like this little line here, that, that probably puts 10 years on her. <laughs> There's a reason... <clears throat> excuse me. Like there's, my voice is cracking all the time. Uh, yeah, there's a reason uh, Botox is a thing, I suppose. It's the point of all this. And again, I'm just going to shift this whole area over to the right. Yep. I think that's bread. I think that's bread and butter. Go ahead and clear up some of that. Make her look a little younger. There you go. So yeah, guys, uh, you may be uh, maybe enthralled with this process, but feel free to uh, feel free to uh, keep posting questions there. And if 
you have any. Just trying to get some real light uh, porosity going there. Oh my god, why is that happening? Why is it doing that? We don't know. Are you going to give me a straight line here? Is, is Photoshop uh, crashing on me? No? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's um. Let's not uh, let's not worry about that. There are always glitches. Always glitches. Let's think about the shape. This line doesn't actually exist. It's uh, it's really only implied, so we can get rid of that. There's a little little bit of this highlight here. And a lot more right here. Let me get that shape right. The uh the new portal of evident. Yes, it's exciting stuff. Um yeah, we've uh, we've been working on it. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be awesome. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, it's going to be, uh, a great, great platform. I've, I've, I'm pretty, uh, super pleased I, I've been able to, to be a part of that. Um, and, uh, very excited for that to come out. And, um, yeah, it's going to be, I think it's just going to be a huge improvement. Um, Facebook can be, let's just say it's not like the most, uh, it's not really conducive to, uh, creativity so much. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of distractions, a lot of unnecessary stuff going on. I actually, I don't even, um, I turn off my, my nude news feed with an app. So I don't, most of the time I don't really see what's going on there just because it can be a real, uh, real distraction, but, um, you know, I do go into the, the groups and stuff and look at what I want to look at. Um, uh, but so, yeah, I mean, in this, it would, that with the, um, with the platform, it'll be, uh, you know, it'll just be, it'll just be a huge improvement being able to, to have it all in one space, access all the courses, everything, you know? So, uh, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't say, uh, speak to when exactly it will be ready, uh, but it will be sometime this month, so keep an eye out. All right, so I think I have addressed most of the major flaws that I picked up when I flipped this image, just gonna fix some of the shapes that are going on here. And uh, I, I've also neglected to give her this little ear blip here. It's an important detail. <laughs> she must have ears to hear all the wonderful things everyone was saying about her. Yeah, it's looking better. So let's flip it again and see if our changes have have worked. Um, I think overall this is working. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've still got a ways to go. So let's get into it. There's a really strong highlight right here at the edge of the lip. I'm just going to use that to sort of draw it in. And it's not quite that intense, but, you know, we can always roll it back later. Let's get that, uh, that lip color in here. It's a great color. Almost uh, salmon-ish. 
And it changes as it goes uh, from one side of the lip to the other. You'll notice. Gets a little, a little grayer, a little more towards the blue, a little darker. Even towards the, uh, let's push it towards the violet, actually. Um, when red goes into uh, shadow, and when, when it takes on a cool tone, as it does in a shadow, it uh, becomes violet. And notice that color is not anywhere in this photo study. I'm just kind of using my knowledge of, of uh, you know, color theory to, to put that in there. I'll have a little bit of that red reflected light. Oh, hey, D, nice to see you here. Um, I see, like, for the beginning, what was your idea? Explaining the Dragon Lady. Um, yes, I don't know if I can, go, if I, I don't know if I, if I have it in me to go over, go through all that again, but, um, you know, it's all, it's all there at the beginning of the video. I recommend you, you check it out at some other time. Um, Mostly because I, uh, I'm, do I'm, I'm doing some delicate stuff here, and uh, I uh, don't want to uh, don't want to try to remember everything that I was saying there. But um, I did. I went over uh, a bit of what I was doing compositionally there, how I came up with the idea, um, and uh, how I uh, sort of. I use my usual, uh, my usual kind of random gesture sort of method for getting there. So check it out. Um, uh, yes, I am. I am aware of the the date. <laughs> uh, yes, but. Um, I, uh, yeah, I can't, can't give any more details about that right now, but stay tuned, keep an eye out in the Facebook group, everything. Sign up for the waiting list if you haven't already. Um, there's a link for that on, uh, on the Evident, uh, announcement video on the Evident YouTube channel if you want to check that out. I'm noticing this gray. It's nice gray on the other side. I love grays. They're so useful. I'm just going to push that even more. And I'm noticing as I as I find that color, I'm noticing a few other areas where it pops up, so I'm just going to kind of jump around and that's a little too light for that area. But Noticing some other areas where that, that comes in. And, uh, yes, here we go. Hmm. Not totally sure about. Let's take this down a bit. See if we can correct this. I think our expression's not quite right down here. Just smiling a bit too much. Can't have that. Um, cool. So it's shaping up pretty well. Just want to really get these uh, these dark spaces in here, and then we'll start to shape the the edge of her neck. Um, and we're going to return to the eyes too because that's obviously the the most important feature here. I'm gonna bring out my dry brush again. And we want to get those right. Don't want to send out your study, your portrait study, with their eyes all wonky. It's not, uh, it's not a good idea. Let's 
just going to keep this light a bit diffuse as it is in the image and uh, bring back some of those those oranges I was seeing earlier. They kind of pop up all around here. Especially along the jawline where we're getting some of that reflected light. I actually might change that later because I want to do some um, some blue uh, rim light um, later on, but uh, we can always change it. And there's this, uh, the technical term is, uh, well, what is the technical term? Subsurface scattering. That's what's happening around the, the highlight of this nose. The light is actually um, penetrating the skin and glowing from beneath, which is a really cool thing. Um, it only happens with with skin and other, you know, semi-transparent uh, 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 substances. So it's not just the highlight isn't just going to end and then the shadow begins. There's this little space between them where there's a lot of intense uh, red coloration. Seeing a bit more of uh, a bit more reddish pink highlights around this chin here, and then also around this area here. We can just keep pushing those. So I think we've got most of our our colors and shapes going for the majority of the face. So let's um. Let's dive into those. Actually, I, I just want to top up those uh, those lips before we move on to the eyes. So that's going to be very, uh, well, it's not super important, but I just want to make sure that's it's all filled in there. It's not in, a, in its uh, sketchy phase anymore. And I also missed the uh, the shadow under the lip. That's super important, actually. Just sort of a straight line, actually. But it's a different uh, different color. It's a bit more of this orange, orange grayish. Need more of that orange in there. And then this chin comes up like that, and we have a little highlight there. And there's a little of that over here, too. I love this brush because it's actually sort of closely closely matching the, uh, the pores, too, from the image. And 
Yes, exactly. Exactly, same kind of thing, yeah. That's like a pretty extreme example of the uh, the subsurface scattering, but it's the same same concept when you when lights hitting um hitting skin at an angle some of it is going to bounce off and some is going to pass through so uh that's that's why you'll see you know around the where wherever the light sort of transitions into shadow you're going to see some of that intense red glow you can even put some of it here and knowing that means you can push that even further you know i can i can put it in uh let's take this shadow color here let's make this this whole shadow a bit more well defined actually um it actually comes down whoops wrong color comes down under the nose right here and then sort of comes around the edge um you can put a little of that that scattering right around the edge of the shadow and okay let's just move this about and kind of have this fade out into the forehead a little bit and let's dive into these eyes and make sure those are, are right on. I'm going to flip this again, just make sure we're accurate. Keep keep the mind fresh. I'll probably just keep these the same size. Um, one thing I want to get right first is this eyebrow shape is actually a little bit different. We want to make sure we adjust that so everything everything else that we're adjusting relative to that will uh, will work and maybe the same sort of thing for the other side I think the other side looks okay and so let's just go into these eyes I think uh, first thing I notice is you know I've made this this whole uh, eyelash a bit thick and there's a nice uh, highlight almost a highlight right on top of it where that that folded eyelid is so I just want to push that out a bit and then reinforce the line on the other side This is delicate stuff, the, the eye stuff. You know, we are the most, you know, we're sensitive about the whole face, but the eyes are really what tells us if something is alive or not. That's really important for us to know evolutionarily. I mean, it's that's not all of it we communicate a lot with our eyes a lot of intent a uh, lot of language so um, we really want to get these right we want to make sure our shapes are right not too concerned about those eyelashes going up or anything. Just want to get these general shapes right. I'm going to start dipping into the mixer brush a little bit too. That'll help us to smooth out some of the, the more intense uh, colors and things we've, we've put on here. Turn up the mix a little bit. Turn up the mix. Now I'm a DJ. Trying to get a good blend going here.
<clears throat> I kind of, I almost like how this, there's just this ambiguity right here. I almost want to leave that there, but it doesn't really help for, for readability from a distance so much. I want to make sure we have that that upward turning uh, part of the eyelid that'll help define the eye a little better and then that'll sort of fade into the shadow I think that's a bit more readable Darken this up. Get those eyelashes. That's key. And I haven't even really painted inside the irises yet. So, um, let's, um, let's start pushing our, our fantasy angle a bit more here. This woman has these kind of uh, kind of nice glowing orange areas on the uh, for her irises. I'd like to let me see if we can push that to uh, maybe to like a yellow or something. I don't know. Do you guys have any ideas? What are some cool uh, eye colors we can give her? It makes her look a bit otherworldly, you know. I think maybe I'll just uh, let's go with let's go with like a sort of a yellow green. See how that looks. And I'm gonna follow the same pattern of values that I whoops I um <laughs> say that I picked the wrong value. Um, I'm gonna follow follow the same pattern of values I see in her irises, but uh, I'm just going to use a different color for that. And use the, there seems like it's brightest around here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe add like a, a tinge of uh, blue around the edges, you know, make it really, uh, Really interesting. Can even push that even more. There's little dots of color going on there. I think that looks pretty cool. Whoops. Um, I'm noticing. What am I noticing here? I need to. The shadow is just kind of. be developed a bit more like that and then we'll work it back okay and I'm looking at my my navigator and it's almost looking like her eyes veering a little bit off too far to the right. So I'm just going to sort of try to push this in a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks much better. I'm just going to reinforce this awesome eyelash. Maybe make a few more. Cool. Let's move on to the next eye. Uh, what am I seeing here? I think there needs to be some darker values in here. Uh, this takes some of that hair color.
but not quite as dark. Wait for my computer to catch up. Here it is. Yeah, I mean that would like the I feel like the violet would would mirror the background. I almost want uh you know like when you're painting when you're thinking about your color choices um or with you know as I say with every everything but you know in this example with with color um thinking about like having most of your image be one color tone uh part of it be another and then a very small uh portion of your image can be a completely different color and i'm thinking i think that'll that'll line well with what we've done with the green here because there's nothing else in this image that really reflects that and it's going to make them a really great focal point actually going to tone this down just a little bit and then there are these some night these nice bright highlights just like right here and right here maybe that was a bit too much but you get the point <laughs> that's okay nice to see you uh shalandra uh welcome back um what have you missed uh yeah i mean you feel free to uh to catch up on the earlier part of the video at any time that'll be it'll be up here for for you guys to view whenever um i've gone over um finding photo references uh and i went a little bit over um what I did with the, that recent piece I posted on Evident, uh, the uh, the uh, the Dragon Rider, and I talked about um, I talked about some mistakes I made with the concept there, um, as well as uh, what I did to um, to make the the composition successful, uh, at least you know in, in my eyes, um, and uh, we talked a little bit about using a. Uh, uh, photo reference for uh, as as kind of a jumping off point for a concept, which is sort of what I'm doing right now. I'm still, um, uh, yes, you will find out about the dragon. Um, I'm still working on sort of like getting this up to speed as far as being a photo study, and I'm just on the verge of starting to. Um, push it a little more as a, uh, a concept piece but I want to make sure I get these f these study elements in first whoops don't need that oh thank you Yes, a monumental achievement of uh, 100 subscribers. Um, yeah, no, I'm. I'm. That's that's pretty cool. It's really really awesome to see uh, people are are into this stuff and um, are interested in learning uh, or or just watching the process. You know, uh, I think uh, yeah, these live streams have been a lot of fun for me and. Uh, I hope just as much for you guys. So, let's just do a flip here. Make sure this is, I think the angle, I think the angle for this eye is a bit too high, but since I'm sort of thinking about giving her some more elf characteristics I might just might just uh, replicate that over here just, just to balance it out pull this down a little bit there we go and of course we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to match the eye color
Awesome. 109th. Just keeps going up. Uh, yeah, so if you're, um, oh yeah, the, the devotion to the, the study. Well, actually I enjoy this process quite a bit. And once you, you know, you get into it, um, you know, it can be, I, I, for me, this is kind of a, a relief sometimes, you know, because, uh, because you don't really have to, you don't have to make anything up. Um, you can just sort of you know, just, it, it's a simple goal, basically, just try to make what's in the photo, and it's pretty straightforward, you know, you just have to figure out how are you going to use, how are you going to measure things, and, um, and all that to make that, and to make that happen, you know, how are you going to adjust your strategy to make this read like the photograph, and then on top of that, how are you going to, uh, implement your own creative style and strategies to, uh, move past it. And I think that's kind of like, that's, uh, that's where the study becomes, uh, how, how do I say this? That's where the study becomes a useful tool for a painter because, um, you know, you, you, when you move past trying to replicate something totally accurately and towards capturing its essence you know capturing just the the clearly readable definable qualities about the image and then pushing them further you know like one example of of doing that that i've i've talked about a bit in the past is just pushing your colors you know noticing where the colors are in the image noticing what they are and then just pushing them further in in that direction Grab this iris color, start keying this in here. This angle's a bit different. And then let's bring in that, uh, that awesome green color again. blue where it sort of fades around into the shadow notice I, I'm not just using circles for the irises because that's not what I'm seeing in my reference you know we all know irises are circles but it, it takes a bit more to move past that and look at what we're actually seeing in the photo based on all the uh, the reflections that are happening in the in the eye and all that sort of stuff so and then let's just reinforce these little highlights here and then I think this whole area just needs a bit of a bit of shading they look a bit a bit flat right now. And you know, this is a a flat image, you know, and like I said, I usually wouldn't I don't know, I usually wouldn't pick something like this for study just because it's not the it's hard to uh Hard to represent form so much here, um, but yeah, we do our best.
Just trying to find exactly how this jawline's gonna work. Okay, so it's not, um, it's not perfect, it's not spot on, but like, uh, I think this is a good enough basis for, for us to, uh, to move past it in, in the last, uh, uh, last segment here, we can move past this into something, uh, a bit more interesting as a concept. So first of all, let's let's get rid of all this. We don't need all this hair. And let's uh let's get fun with it. Start experimenting with our light source a bit more and start thinking about having a uh, uh, contrasting uh, light source as well. I think, I'm not totally sure, but I think I want to move this eye a little bit. Let's see how this works. it over, turn it a bit. Hmm. Maybe, let's try something crazy here. Maybe we can move this whole face. <laughs> Copy paste that, shift it over. Hmm, I think that's better. Flip it. Whoops. Delete her. I think that's a bit closer. <laughs> let's return to what we were doing here. Uh, let's let's take our background here and develop it a bit more to reflect our light source just subtly that's even a bit too too much right there but and then this blue i love i mean orange and blue is just a classic if you're thinking about creating a color scheme i mean there's a reason why it's on you know 75% of movie posters. It's just awesome, and I love it. Uh, but yeah, the lighting scheme in this one is sort of boring, so... <laughs> At least, in my humble opinion. Uh, yes, she hath become elfish. I uh, might even change her hair color too. So, <laughs> stick around for for this fantasy makeover. Let's just take that uh, that blue light source. Let's just start playing it in as a little bit of rim light here. Can go even more intense than that. start. Oops, I'm still painting on the background. That's why it's not working. Okay, back it up. Let's start working that into the shadows. The plane of the face that's facing away from the other light source. It's going to be 
catching some of this blue, even even here along the chin. This shadow, this shadow, this shadow. You can see already, it just gives this piece just a bit more life to it. All this up here. And then we can we can kind of reinforce the uh, the separation between the light sources with sort of a an intermediate zone where where neither of those light sources are hitting, and that's going to be slightly darker, slightly more neutral. It's a bit it's a bit too harsh of a turn there, but. I mean, at this point, we can probably just merge these together. So let's just start to key in some of this rim light. Not everywhere, but just during those, wherever, wherever there's somewhere that where it's going to be angled towards the light source. This is uh this is the same thing I did in that uh that dragon uh piece by the way, the dragon rider. Same kind of lighting scheme. It's one of my favorites. Even a little Highlight on the nose here. Maybe that's a bit much. Just bring this hair over, start to define that a little more. Some more hair coming around here. Darken that up. By the way, I've pretty much used like two brushes for this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> not saying that you have to, but you know, it's it's just you know, it's it's just worth uh, if you're someone who's just like feels like they need the perfect brushes to uh, to make anything, you know. Or, or huge diversity of brush. I mean, it depends upon how you work, but uh, I find at least that um, having fewer can can often uh, simplify things for me. Oh yes, uh, Aria from from Aragon. I uh, yeah, I love those books. Maybe that's what I was thinking of when I made that. <laughs> Notice that like it it doesn't really matter that much what I do here, uh, with with how things are framed so much at this point. Like, um, I've taken care of the major details, so I can kind of just have everything else sort of bounce off of that in a sense. You know, I want to make sure the head is. An appropriate uh, shape or whatever <laughs> or size but
So yeah, what's some uh, what's some other stuff we can do to make this a bit more uh, a bit more fantasy esque? Maybe maybe a cool cool tattoo, something that comes down from the eye. Works its way around. I'm no tattoo artist, by the way, but something subtle. We don't want to go crazy with it, but maybe uh, since she's sort of elfish, can have some kind of leaf thing. I don't know, maybe it can just be a simple... Simple, sort of... Simple something. Just sort of an implied, implied tattoo here. That's kind of cool. Maybe some some scars. I don't know, maybe she's been in some some battles. We can even let's do something crazy. We can even mess with her expression a little bit. down there we go just looking a bit more a bit more defiant with the lowered eyebrows Oh yes, the band, the forehead band, that's a key, key elvish feature. I'm just going to define this, uh, this jawline a bit more. Give it a, in that, like, I can even, yeah, now that I've, I've established some base proportions, I can mess with them even more, uh, give her a bit more of an angular look. Uh, I think I may want to let's merge this. I'm going to get to that band in a second here. But first, I would like to lower the eyes by just a fraction. Perfect. Flip it. Yeah, let's let's do a some kind of circlet. Let's uh, if it's a super reflective object, it's going to take on a lot of the um, the ambient uh, lighting. It's going to be it'll have a bit of its own native color. So if this is gold, it's going to have it's going to be gold wherever. Um, it's not a good gold color. Wherever it's sort of in a neutral place, or if it's being illuminated by a warm light, but wherever those, um, wherever it's catching that blue light, it'll just it'll just take that on. It's kind of cool. Yes, drawing metal. Um, yeah, basically, I mean, 
a basic principle with with metal is it's just gonna it's gonna tend to take on more of of the 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 light of its environment um and it'll also show show a lot more texture variety because of that you know um if if it if it's a, a rougher metal if it's polished it won't you know and that's kind of something you have to decide for yourself as far as how it's going to go <clears throat> but um yeah in general if you're if you're making something metal you're just going to want to think about what your light sources are and how they're going to be represented like even i'm just taking some straight blue from the light source and putting it on the uh, the reflected side here and then it'll have it'll have uh, some pretty intense highlights as well which we will get to in a minute but we want to make sure we've we've defined our uh, our shape and our general form pretty well before we put those in we don't want to overdo it with the highlights We can even push this hair back a little bit. We'll make that shape read a bit better. And then our, uh, as we push the hair back, there's going to be more light hitting this area here. I'm just going to develop this this hairline a bit more because I've kind of neglected that a little bit. I could leave it as a, and we'll actually we'll return to uh, losing our edges a bit uh, in a bit, but uh, for now I, I just want to I want to define this a bit more. Blood diamond in the center of the band, sure. Sure. Is that red or is that just a... <laughs> I think that's a very specific term. I think I'm getting a little caught up with this hair here, but I just want to make it look a bit more a bit more convincing. Flip it. And let's see. Yeah, so let's let's return to this uh this thing here. Just uh, let's give it a shadow to help it uh, be defined a bit more. I'm also using that to adjust the shape a bit. And 
And then that shadow is just going to sort of fade out a little bit. It's going to be harder as it gets closer to the light source and uh, vice versa. Okay, let's just have this other side sort of, it's a bit too strong of a color, so let's pull that back a bit. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's do something red here. Switch our color. Oops. That'll uh, that'll contrast nicely with the the green too. So this diamond is also, it's another uh, uh, semi-transparent surface. So let's see, we're going to have, um, we're going to have a highlight area wherever the, let's say the light's probably hitting this side up here the most. Let's warm that up a bit. And then... It's going to be a bit of reflected light down here. And then uh, a bit of really intense but lighter light sort of passing through the bottom. That'll be a bit more, a bit more orange, a bit more towards the, the native color of that light source. So that's basically it. I mean, you it's pretty, pretty, pretty clear cut in this situation, but you have your, your direct light coming from over here. You have your uh, reflected light, which I think that looks a little green. I think it's, we've got to make that a bit more orange. That's reflecting light from the face and from the uh, this area down here. Then we have our uh, subsurface light, which is going right through it. There can be a little of that up here too. And then everything else where these there are these sharp... Um, these sharp kind of divisions between different planes, it's just going to be sort of a dark value. Maybe a little of that shadow is kind of bleeding in like that. Um, and then we're going to have a, our brightest highlight sort of right around here yeah that's pretty uh it's pretty good all right let's carry that in here and have this shadow start to fade things out a bit i'm getting a, a bit too crazy detailed here but and i actually want to i want to take this this diamond to just tone it down a bit because it's it's starting to almost become a another focal point in itself and I don't want that it's a bit too intense so let's just take the levels down a bit and drop the saturation now our, our focus is a bit more on the eyes, which is where we want it to be. Now 
then we can have some some highlights along this metal wherever it's angled towards the light <laughs> well yeah I mean uh, it's uh, I'm actually gonna bump up this color a little bit yeah, not so much of a, a calculate. I mean, it, it is a bit of a calculation, but all you have to do is sort of closely approximate it. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. You know, we're just trying to trying to create an impression here. Actually, this shadow is going to carry some of the the ref the uh, refracted light as well, so that's going to have a bit of red in it too. Very subtle, but it's actually going to be a bit brighter, a bit more towards the violet because it's on the cool side. And that's a bit intense, so let's tell that down. And just blend that up there. All right. Uh, and then let's just start creating a bit of some interesting uh, highlight things going on with this, this band. Let's change the shape a bit to match that. And then we can actually maybe not. Um, we can include some of that blue light reflected off of this diamond too. And I want the style of this thing to be consistent, actually, so I'm going to scrap those sort of flowy flowy lines I put in there. Let's make this a bit more clear-cut. Let's have them sort of echo out from this central point here. Something like that. I don't know. I could I could spend a lot of time working on these these little details. You know, you can keep developing it further and further, but um, probably try to wrap this up at some point soon. For my own sake. Um, let's have that shadow extend over here. Oh yeah, that's nice. And we'll have our, whoops, whoops, Just hitting buttons randomly. We'll have our highlight expand a bit more right here. That's catching the most light. We'll use a little bit of that down here, too. We can probably have this even curve down a bit. And then let's... Uh, Mimic that that blue light in the hair. hair coming out over the, uh, the circlet here. Let's even push those, that rim light, keep, even, keep pushing that very subtly. Maybe not so subtly, but I just love, love doing this kind of stuff. It's very satisfying. You can even have those, the hair is sort of catching the light if they're flying out like that. Maybe they're not, though, because she's very composed. I don't know. 
I don't know what her story is, but we can, you know, we can affect that story by making choices like this. Like, do we want our hair kind of flying out all over the place or is it, uh, you know, it's sort of well kempt, you know, that kind of thing. We can catch that highlight on the ears. Few, uh, <clears throat> a few stray hairs going around. Highlight that shadow. I don't even, I don't need her anymore. We're done with you. <laughs> we don't need her. We've moved on. <laughs> we can even uh, incorporate just the, we don't have quite the right angle here, but I'm going to push it anyway. We can use some of that subsurface scattering on the ear. Uh, maybe we, maybe we really don't have the right angle, but. Just push these highlights a bit more. Wherever that, wherever the face is angled upward at all. I think I want to adjust this jawline again. Make it a bit more even with the other side. some highlights in the hair oh yeah that looks good She was assimilated. <clears throat> and uh, now we're also at the point where we want to think about where can we lose some of our edges you know, where can we, uh, where can we make de detail disappear to increase our focal point presence? I talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, so if you want to know more about that, check out the earlier part of the video or the, the post I made on the, the evident group. Um, but basically we just want to, uh, I want to sort of deliberately mask out certain areas and that will help to draw attention to the places that we want focus to be on.
Yeah, I, we could uh, we could include some kind of uh, some kind of pendant too. We want to be careful with that too, though, because we don't want to we don't want to include too much detail in that area. It's just gonna um, my, it has it carries the risk of distracting the eye. But if we're real subtle about it, just something like that, you know. We can uh, we can get away with it as if you know we're we're looking through a camera and that that's just slightly slightly out of focus and the contrast is going to be lower down here Just gonna reinforce this shadow here too, because our our uh, light source has grown stronger since uh, we've been using that reference. I can show you here. We can compare. I'll bring her back. You know this light. Whoops. Hello. Um. <laughs> This light source is a bit softer than than what we've established here, so I'm just sort of strengthening this uh, the shadow. Highlights in here. We can even use the uh, can switch up the brushes a little bit for once. Bring out this rake brush for some of the hair work. that highlight a bit hmm I don't know if I've actually improved that at all by doing all that um let's see if we can get back some of that that nice red color we had before. Okay, and I'm just gonna develop the shadow a bit more. Just make final, final touches, little, little adjustments here. Here we can, you know, use the uh, the photo reference again. 
make sure our anatomy is still working for us. Oh yeah, there's a bit of a subtle highlight near the edge of the lip here. And then uh, some stronger highlights on the lip that I missed earlier. Very subtle, but worth noting. Just a little scratchy, scratchy lip, lip marks. I don't know what to call those. Something just a little bit off about this eye. So I think one of the last things I'm going to do here, see if we can improve that at all. Yeah, it needs to be a bit bigger. Maybe that'll be it. Mm, not quite. Let's bring it in a little bit. Mm, change its orientation a bit. I think maybe the uh, it's the eyes. Maybe they're not quite looking at the same spot. So let's take this. Copy paste. Let's see if we can just shift that over just a few pixels. See if that improves anything. that's better maybe just pump out that highlight a bit right there very subtle but important For readability maybe uh, I think there's another couple smaller ones around here Looks like the eye needs to go up. Hmm. Which eye? The one I'm fussing about? Maybe it does. Let's give it a try. 
Let's see what happens. I think the eyebrows are very different too. Let's let's address that first. So maybe that will might uh, address our issue here. Lots of tweaking. All right, let's take this. Yeah, let's just take this whole thing. Copy paste. Move it up a little bit. Yeah, you might be right. Turn it inward a little bit. It's hard to tell. I mean, normally what I would do at this point is I would just walk away for a while and come back to it. Hmm. Darker in the, yeah, it should be darker in the navigator because it's, it's cast in shadow. But uh, yeah, maybe I think maybe around, yeah, like around here, this could use some lightening up. So there is going to be some some light catching that. It's going to be a little brighter in here. Maybe not that much. Let's make this shadow a bit more clear. This, uh, this hair, I regret making that. It's just kind of getting in the way. But maybe I should embrace that. You know, I, th I think I'm uh, just going to kind of fill that out like that. And with some variation. Yeah, I think we are pretty dang close. Maybe uh, as close as I'm willing to go tonight. Um, so we may uh, may just stop it here. A few little accents there. Just try one more thing with this eye. <laughs> because I love to, to fixate on stuff like that. I mean, it's it's really important to to get these right. Obviously, I'm just gonna bring it a little closer in. Yeah, I'd say that'll do it. So, uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. As you can see, it's starting to, it's starting to get uh, dark here. So let me just pop that light on. And uh, um, yeah, so feel free to um, to leave any more 
any more questions you have in the comments uh and uh i uh, i'll check back a little bit if you want uh if you want answers for those um and you know feel free to yeah feel free to leave any more questions you have but uh this will be this will be it as soon as i stop messing with this uh <laughs> this thing up here um i think i'm pretty pleased with with how this turned out you know it's uh you know maybe not uh anatomically as as great as it could be but um i think it's uh it's a great example of how we can uh we can take something like this uh, as a photo reference and then start with a study and then take it uh in a in a different direction and use it for whatever we want to uh to use it for whether it's creating a, a fantasy uh character or scene or whatever it is uh it's a really useful uh really useful skill to have and it's also just great to do photo studies whenever just to uh just to get your chops up you know you always always learn things every time you do a study even if you don't realize it at the time so uh thank you all for joining me and uh it's been really great uh appreciate the questions and the engagement and uh thank you for for subscribing and helping me to get that count up and get uh, more uh, more art out to uh, the people who need it. So I uh, hope you all have a, a good night or morning or whatever time it is where you are, and uh, I'll uh, catch you next time. All right.